the law of light or the law of understanding the law of understanding listen to me please nobody has the right to affect this realm except as he has tapped into a knowledge and an understanding everything you see happening on earth is a crystallization of mysteries is a crystallization of a kind of understanding manifestations actually come to give texture to spiritual understanding without an understanding in a particular sphere of operation you have no authority in fact your authority is predicated on your understanding any area you lack understanding you are a slave and the moment you gain light you become a commander this one is not given is taken there are many things you expect to receive but when you have understanding you take you don't expect to receive it naturally confers power over you four ways of contacting the light of God that awakens your potentials and your ordination number one is by contact with the Word of God the moment you begin to interact with the Word of God the Word of God does not make you a theologian the Word of God illuminates you in Psalm 119 verse 130 he said thy word is a light unto my path the moment the word come the entrance of thy word he said he giveth light and he giveth understanding to the simple the moment light the word of God begins to enter you you will discover wisdom begins to activate you will discover counsel will begin to activate direction will begin to come strategies will begin to come you are wondering how did i know this you do, you didn't know it because you studied studying is important but this one is a whisper from another dispensation the moment the word enters you you will know that the utterances of the word they are echoes from eternity the word is older than time time itself was created by the world and so whatever darkness it is men are in the moment the world enters your spirit it awakens you to a possibility that existed before the complex manipulation that took place here began to happen and then you can delve into the matter navigate through it and bring a solution that the greatest thinkers cannot provide why do you think the devil is fighting our generation from sitting on the world because he knows that therein lies the key to light you can watch a movie for 20 hours you can gist with a friend for three days you can make your hair for one week but when you sit with the scripture you start yawning ah, ah. some people carry one chapter of the bible they are on verse two they sleep off you now ask how many seconds does it take to read one verse they don't even have enough passion for the word to stay awake for five minutes with the word of god and so reading the bible becomes a therapy for sleeping when they want to sleep they are ready they now carry bible john chapter 1 verse 1 in the beginning was the word and the word into another word and then after 20 minutes they wake up they are still on verse 1 they will read verse 1 for one night and then every manipulation that comes against their life they are stranded marriage is not coming they are stranded sickness they are stranded and they are wondering poverty they are stranded meanwhile the answer is not in heaven it's in them he said he has given us he didn't say he will give us he has given us all things that pertain to life and to godliness but it's through the knowledge so as they don't access that knowledge they can't find what is on their inside the bible said this is the hope this is the mystery of the age christ in you the hope of glory that means the secret of glory the potential of glory the propensity of glory is already on the inside of the man who died of cancer yesterday it's already on the inside of the man who is currently poor it's already on the inside of the brother who is walking frustrated but the problem is only the world can go deep to excavate it he said the word of God is a double-edged sword. It divided asunder between spirit and soul, between bone and marrow. But they have not allowed the word to enter into them and create a surgery. There is a surgery that the word will do to you. Because lying in you now is a wisdom the world have not seen. Lying in you now is a power the world have not seen. Lying in you now is an invention the world is yet to see. The second 
only way to access light is through consecration. 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 Listen, this is kingdom order. I know there is a place of reading in Harvard. That's another type of light. I know there's a place and we encourage it. I'm also a student. But I'm teaching you things that God has made available to us that gives us a strategic advantage. If you want light to dwell on you constantly, you must be consecrated to God. This generation that is corrupt and compromised by everything will remain blind. Because one of the greatest ministry of the devil is to blind men. Is to blind men. When the devil makes you carnal, even if it is before you, you can't see it. In 1 Corinthians 2, 12 and 14, he said, we have not received the spirit that is of this world, but we have received the spirit that is of God, that we may freely know the things that are given to us by God. So the spirit that is of this world stops you from knowing. And then he went to verse 14 and he shows us what the spirit of this world does. He said, the natural man. The man who is reduced to judge and to operate from his senses. He said, he receiveth not the things of the spirit of God. So everything God put in you, you can't take it. He said, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. And so a man who wants to walk perpetually in light must learn to consecrate himself if you don't consecrate yourself you cannot know no matter how you read if you like read everything that you need to read if you are into fornication you are into lying you are into manipulation you can't see you are blind because you have submitted your allegiance to a prince that darkens in Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 18 he said do not walk like the Gentiles walk in the futility of their minds. He said they've had their understanding darkened. So they cannot perceive the things that God has made available for his children. Every time you compromise and give yourself to what the world is doing. You darken your spirit. You darken your spirit. And that's why Peter's advising youth. He said flee from youthful loss. He said it wages war against your soul. You think you, you had five minutes pleasure. You think you did something nobody is seeing. You have put a veil on your soul. And so when God is giving inspiration for leadership, when God is giving inspiration for business, when God is giving inspiration for kingdom service, you will be amazed that you can't have it. People are hearing things, they are shouting. People are weeping, having encounters. And you are still wondering, are those things true? You can't see it because they are spiritually discerned. Number three, how do you access light? Through service. There are many things you can't read in the book. So what God will do is that he will lead you to somebody else who has it. So that through that person's light, you too will have light. It's the principle of gleaning. There are many things God wants you to do. He will focus your attention on somebody else who is doing it. And as you are looking at the person, the person, God now uses that person's life. To tell you the secrets of that journey. Both the places he excelled and the places he failed. You know many people who are sent to serve. They get offended at those they are serving. Because they say, I thought it was this. I thought it was that. Even his failure is part of the syllabus. God is showing you what you will not do. And then God will show you his end. So that you will know if you repeat it, that's how you will end. So the failure of those you are serving is also a blessing to you. You can never, in Philippians chapter 4 verse 9, Paul was teaching. And here's what Paul said to Timothy. I know you have read books. He said, but this thing is beyond books. He said, those things which you have both learned, received, heard, and seen in me. He said, do. And said, the God of peace shall be with you. There are certain things you see. That's why when a man wants to make impact, by all means he must have. God will insist that he serves. Because there is a lot of learning to do there. And if you can't serve, who will serve you? If you can't follow, who will you lead? So you find an arrogant generation. Everybody wants to start overnight. And they are talking things before you say, Jack, they are quoting a thousand scriptures. <laughs> you will quote that scripture for 30 years. You will now discover that there are forces in this realm beyond quoting of scripture. 
And I, I know these kinds of things will not be new for those of you in the East. Because this is an entrepreneurship region. So you know the principles of service. Service that brings empowerment. Service that brings promotion. If you serve earthly masters and they are able to promote you, is it God's agenda you will serve and you will not be promoted? And you know God is not like some masters. That you are a good boy until you approach the fifth year. Because in the seventh year they will settle you. So they have to start accusing you from the fifth year. So that in the seventh year there will be a problem with your son. God does not operate like that. And so when you are serving, what service will do is that it will open you to secret knowledge. Things that are not said in the public, things that are not written in books, you will have the right to see them. And God will use them to activate you, impart you, and empower you with a light that sometimes you can't even teach but you will manifest. Because there are many things in your life you cannot have cognitive words to explain, but they will be happening. The other day I was asking mama, I said, ah, how do you buy these mountains and build these structures with so much ease? And she was laboring to explain it to me. A point came, she said, come over. Because if I have to give you, you either see it or I part it. Because not everything can be taught cognitively. Certain things must be seen or they must be imparted. And so service brings you the opportunity to see and to be imparted. And so a superior form of light will come to you when you start serving. And finally, the fourth way to access light is by prayer. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17, Paul was speaking to the church in Ephesus. And he showed them the key to light. He said he prayed for them that the the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto them the spirit. It is in, in this scripture that Paul showed us the four major dimensions you enter to hit the zenith of light. He said the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened. If you read this in English, you will not appreciate it. There are four basic classes that you enter in light. Number one is wisdom. And wisdom is actually availability of knowledge. Because that word there is Sophia. It is to become aware of knowledge. As you are sitting here now, you are aware of Apple phones iPhones. You are aware of Android phones. But you don't know anything about the operation. You just know about it. In fact, you can operate it because you bought one. But you see, the man who designed the phone, if he carries it, what he knows about the phone, you discover you don't even know up to 10%. Because what you know about the phone is what the screen projects. The real phone is at the back. So, wisdom is just to make basic knowledge available to you. But there is another level. He now said revelation, apocalypse. That's the opening up. As this hall is now, you can look at it from outside and appreciate it. But you don't know what inside looks like. You have not known the hall. When the door of this hall opens, when you see this hall, that's Sophia. When the door opens, that's revelation, apocalypse. The unveiling of truth so that you can access it. Now, when you enter the hall and there's no light, this chair that is making you comfortable will be the reason why you break your knee. So that the door opens does not mean you can utilize the provision. So Paul said there's another level. After apocalypse, you now have epignosis. Where you come in to experience, you can touch them. And Paul said there is yet another level. He said that the eyes of your understanding may be furnished with light. It's for tizo. That's when light is on. So you can know where the microphone is. You can know where the chair is. So a man who does not pray, at best, may have awareness of things. But you don't make impact by awareness. You make impact by gaining access, by handling, and by applying. And so he said, what will take you deep enough in light, not just to be aware, not just to have access, not just to handle, but to apply? He said, it's prayer. And because they have not awoken to prayer, they say, for now, I am praying for you. But a point came where he began to teach them to pray. Because when you now start praying, you will discover things will start being activated in you.